All right, guys, welcome to Chapter 4, Lesson 3. This is the last lesson in Chapter 4, um, dealing with introduction to atoms. And so today we're going to talk about elements, isotopes, and ions, and how atoms can be different from each other. So the first definition we're going to talk about is the element. Um, and basically, when you're looking at the periodic table, any of those little squares contains information about an element. And an element is a pure substance made from atoms that all have the same number of protons. So when you're looking at your periodic table and you're looking at hydrogen, um, it might be a good idea for you to go ahead and pull out your periodic table right now while we're doing this um, to refer to. It'll make things a little bit easier. Um, so if you're looking at the element hydrogen, um, the top number there, we've talked about this in class, tells you the number of protons. And basically, an element is a substance that has atoms that all have the same number of protons. So every single element, every atom in that element has always has the same number of protons. OK, so well, we've talked about this in class already in order to do our Bohr diagrams, but we're just going to go over it again. If you're looking at your periodic table, um, you've got um, each element has an L a symbol in the middle and a number on the top, which is the atomic number. And the number of protons in the atom of an element in its nucleus is the atomic number. So the atomic number can, tells you the number of protons that are contained in the nucleus. And again, that's the top number right here, just like this is pointing to. The mass number, or the atomic mass, is the total number of protons plus neutrons in an atom in the nucleus. And we've talked about um, what we need to do with the atomic mass in order to use it in class. So the atomic mass usually shows up on your periodic table. For example, if you were to look at um, something like neon on your periodic table, it's atomic number 10, symbol NE. That has a decimal um, of 20 point and then several numbers. So we've talked about what we need to do with that and how we need to round it to the nearest whole number in order to use it because it is the total number of protons plus neutrons in an atom. Isotopes are kind of something new and that are a little bit, can be a little bit confusing to talk about. So. An isotope is an atom of an element with a different number of neutrons than the regular element, which is the one that you see on the periodic table. The standard element is the one that you're looking at right now on your periodic table. So the example that we have here is of um, carbon. So carbon, generally, on your periodic table, if you go to C on your periodic table, it's um, atomic number 12. I'm sorry, atomic number 6 and um, the atomic mass is 12. Carbon 12 means that it has six protons and six neutrons. And if you look on the periodic table, you have the C and the top number is six, and the bottom number when you round it is 12. So for you guys, when we were doing stuff to do our Bohr diagrams, you would take the bottom minus the top to get the number of neutrons in the standard element, and that's six, just like it shows us here at the bottom of this picture. So this is the standard element that you see on the periodic table. An isotope, like carbon-14, is an element with a different number of neutrons, okay? So an isotope means that it has a different number of neutrons than the standard element that you see on the periodic table. So for carbon-14, that means the mass number, or the atomic mass, is 14. So that means that you have to take 14 as the bottom number, minus 6 as the top number, which gives you 8 neutrons, which tells you that it's an isotope because it has a different number of neutrons than the standard number of neutrons in the regular um, element. Next is the average atomic mass, and the average atomic mass is the weighted average mass of a mixture of elements isotopes and that probably makes absolutely no sense. So we're just gonna break it down a little bit more. Basically what this means is that you take all the isotopes of an element. So all of the known 
isotopes, all of the atoms that differ in numbers of neutrons, add those masses together, and then divide them by the number of isotopes, which is the average. And that's the number that we get on the periodic table in front of you. That's why we get a decimal, because we add together all the known isotopes and then divide them by the number of isotopes. And that's how we get the average atomic mass. And that's the mass that you see as the bottom number decimal on your periodic table. An ion, okay, so now we have ions. We had isotopes first, now we have ions. And an ion is an atom that has a positive or a negative charge. So generally atoms, they are, um, have no charge. They have the same number of protons and the same number of electrons because once again, that top number tells you the number of protons and the number of electrons in an atom. So usually atoms have no charge because they have the same number of positive charged protons and negatively charged electrons. But if an atom has more electrons than its atomic number, it becomes a negative ion. If I have more electrons or more negative charges, that is a more negative atom. But if an atom has less electrons, than its atomic number, it's a positive ion. So if I get rid of negative charges, I get rid of electrons, I get rid of negatives, then I become more positive. So that's a positive charge. Okay, so once again, an ion is an atom that has a positive or negative charge. If I get more electrons, I bring in more negative electrons, I am a negative ion because I have more negative charges with me. If I get rid of or give away electrons, I'm giving away negative charge, I am now more positive, so I'm a positive ion. And we'll be going over this more in class. Okay, we are going to watch Steve Spangler and Ellen blow up some Pringles. So here we go. Here. I need you to put these on, so here, I'll do it for you. Okay. Okay, hold on. I'm sorry. All right. Is that good? All right. Thanks. Nice. Because you always have your safety guards before you eat your Pringles, all right? So, so you have potato chips. And I noticed this, is that if you're eating potato chips, you might get your hands stuck in there, and that would be wrong. No, no, it's covered. So I have a way to kind of get the Pringles out. So here's what you do. You just put a hole. Yeah. 